Hello, this is my review for Endure the Stars, the first game from Grimlord Games. Uh, I got the Kickstarter version, and I've been playing it roughly the past two weeks or so, pretty non-stop. Um, and so I just wanted to give kind of a quick review of it. If you wanted to see how the game actually plays, I made a how-to video, and that'll be linked in the description and on the video itself when it goes live. First thing I like to go over is sort of the nitpicky things. These are aspects of the game that, for whatever reason, I didn't really care for. Uh, but honestly, they don't really make or break the game. They just maybe make it slightly more annoying or whatever. Um, first thing is the character boards that come in the game. Um, they released as an expansion a alternative gender set so those come with more character boards and these are actually relatively thick and so when you're combining the big chunky miniatures the big tiles and then these things and the cards it's and then you have double the amount of these tiles just because of an alternative gender it's it's impossible to fit it into one box it's it just doesn't feel like something that's really necessary especially since the other side is blank they might as well just printed the other gender on the other side. And or just made the uh, tiles character dashboards extremely generic. And then you could just go by color. But they didn't. Again, like I said, pretty nitpicky, but not a huge thing. Another thing was the event cards. Um, the cards in this game are relatively big. Um and they don't have a lot of information on them. The event cards, there's only about mm, five or six events in the game total. Um, some of them kind of need a little extra explanation, and there's so much space on those cards. They really could have just printed what was in the rule book onto the cards. It Once you learn the events, it's really not a big deal, but it just kind of sucks the first few games to you get an event card, and they're not... Most of them are self-explanatory, but not all of them. Um, and you have to go and reference the rule book. And every time you have to reference the rule book, that's just kind of annoying when it's not necessary. Another thing for me was the tile readability. Um, I mean, for the most part, the game plays like Zombicide. The game kind of looks like Zombicide. So the tiles are kind of divided like Zombicide. There's relatively clear lines, but there are a few tiles where it's somewhat hard to tell where you're supposed to cut it off. It's not exactly a square zone. Um, it's maybe slightly more rectangular or just something along those lines. And it's just, it makes it just a little bit harder to actually read the tile. It's really not that big of a deal because honestly, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to just kind of make a decision on the fly. Whichever your group agrees on, you can go with. Um, and that's really, it's only maybe about two of the tiles that have that issue. So again, nitpicky. And so lastly, the big thing for me was also the miniatures. Um, the, most of them are, they're fine. Um, but really the scale was a little odd. The uh, main enemies that come in the um, core box are big. They're big, chunky miniatures. Um, which on one hand is kind of nice. Um, on the other, they take up a lot of space, not only in the box, but on the board. And they don't really seem to mesh that well with the rest of the enemies. So there's a robot expansion. And those robots are only maybe slightly taller than the humans. But it's pretty hard to tell. They're almost the exact same height. So... To have the core box enemies be so tall, they're almost, well, really, they're not much taller, but they're definitely much wider. Um, they just take up a lot of space. Um, that's really it. I mean, other than that, the miniatures kind of came a little bit bent. Uh, but again, that all that's not a big deal. The hot water trick really kind of did it and fixed any bent sort of miniature. So that not an issue, really, with the game itself. All right, now I know the second part of the review, and this is actually kind of the review of the game itself. Um, so I played pretty much every mission in the game. 
uh, there's about, I think, two campaign, like, kind of skipped. Um, largely because I got a pretty good feel for what was good and what was bad about this game. Um, overall, unfortunately, I did not like it as much as I should have. Um, the system is basically Zombicide, and I love Zombicide. That is one of my favorite games. It's a great co-op. Um, the rules are really easy, um, but there's a fair amount of strategy, and there's a lot of randomness, yes, but the randomness kind of adds to the fun, chaotic nature of it. Um, this sort of follows in that footsteps, but the big major changes just... They're not really good changes, for the most part. Uh, there are a few that I actually do like. It's just in conjunction with the other systems, sometimes it doesn't exactly work. So the big thing for me, and the, the big major change that really sort of just doesn't work for this game was, is really the campaign mode. Um, and generally the way the missions work. Um, considering the enemies in this game are sort of random spawning tokens and there's there's a set number on the board at the beginning and unless you draw the the spawning event cards during the event phase in almost every mission that that's the only enemies you encounter so there's only a set number of enemies on the board and the fact that they aren't immediately rushing towards your position means that largely you can hang back and the strategy i tip basically tried was you know go to kind of a corner room out of the way keep doing search actions every turn and hope you get the really good weapons quickly um and generally that worked. Um, even then, you could hang out as a group and really have no problems. When the enemies came around the corner or even into your zone, you just beat the crap out of them and they're gone. Um, and then you don't really have to worry because the other enemies are so far across the map that generally they are not going to actually come close enough to you really have to worry about them. Um, and that kind of stinks. You you can just kind of move in a group uh, instead of spreading across the map. Now I will say there are a few missions in the the game that actually force you to split up or move a lot quicker or some of the some such thing. There is one mission, for instance, where um, enemies will actually well not always but they have a chance of spawning from two points and you need to close the doors that will prevent those spawn points from being active um, but that's a dice roll to determine even if they even spawn at all um, and they may not so you may not be as forced as you would think so that leads me to my other point that really the campaign mode is sort of broken because that particular strategy really just kind of seems to work and it worked in almost every single situation um my win ratio was just ridiculously high and it was kind of boring <laughs> um is that once you have the really good weapons in campaign mode say you get them in the first mission every other mission after that is just a cakewalk um, there was one mission in a campaign that I actually played, um, where I think pretty much every enemy group aggroed pretty quickly for, for whatever reason. I think I did a search action or I just made a bunch of noise, uh, one or the other. They all pretty much swarmed, but, um, they didn't quite come fast enough, so usually, like, kind of came around the corner and then we just kind of blasted them with like three shotguns and an assault rifle or two and boom they're all gone uh before they even really get to do anything and then the other thing that could happen too and happen quite often is the i'm inside the enemies are outside the room and then um the doors lock enemies can't come in i can't go out so it's pretty much just a waste of a round 
I also really had no problem keeping health and resolve at 100%. Um, the resolve check, it, it's kind of an interesting idea, and I, I do like the idea, but um, un until your resolve snowballs for some reason, uh, it's generally pretty easy to pass those checks. Um, a resolve test is really just you want to roll low. Which generally, when you're rolling dice, that's that's kind of how it works. <laughs> you tend to roll low for whatever reason. Um, but I, I did kind of lose a little bit of resolve, and sometimes some things negatively affected me. But again, since we're moving as a big group, even when one member is sort of uh, damaged in some way or isn't quite to their full capacity, the others tend to be able to like make make it up um the other thing that campaign mode is not good as is, is scaling um i do like that there is a scale like if you're playing just with three heroes and four heroes or five heroes there there is a uh, there's a general scale of how many enemies are going to be on the board but that scale does not take into effect what weapons you have or how good they are so once you have the best weapons in the game, which is essentially shotgun and assault rifle, um, and then maybe the, uh, I think it's called the Punisher, the melee hammer, um, you, you basically can win every single mission by just waiting and having the enemies come to you and just shoot them when they appear. The refuge in between each campaign mission is, is definitely kind of an interesting idea. Um, you know, you get about five rounds to kind of heal, or recoup, uh, maybe have something bad to you, happen to you, uh, maybe something good also happens. Um, but it feels kind of tacked on. It's not really um, fleshed out in any sort of way. Um, you, I suppose, if you play this game as sort of like a semi role playing, you can come up with a backstory like who your loved ones are that you can visit or, you know, how the infirmary is chaotic and maybe you don't get healed because, you know, they're low on supplies or you can come up with that. But the, 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 the game system itself is just kind of, it's there. Um, it allows you to heal, recoup, um, possibly not heal and recoup. Um, but, but generally... I really didn't, again, like I said, I didn't have any problems getting to full health and resolve in between each mission. Now, I will say, some of the missions did benefit from just being standalone. Um, there are a few missions in between campaigns where there's one mission uh, with the Kickstarter enemies that um, you get ambushed by them. And they actually surround you uh, right at the beginning. Um, so if you start that as a normal, you only have, I think you have one melee weapon, uh, like one shotgun, and uh, like maybe another melee weapon or like a pistol or something. Uh, but your weapons aren't very good, so your strategy completely changes. Um, before, if you play as a campaign, maybe you have two assault rifles, a shotgun, maybe you have all of that. And so the ambush is kind of almost... You know, pointless. Um, you can just blast them before you even, since everybody starts on the same tile anyway, you just blast them. You don't even have to worry about them. Um, so there are some missions where actually playing it as just sort of a single mission highly benefits and makes that in, the uh, strategy and the way that mission works just that much more interesting. Um, that is a mission where you definitely have to kind of split up and sort of figure out and hope you find the best weapon so that you can turn around and start beating those enemies up. Um, especially since the, um, and this goes into the enemies themselves, the enemies in this game are not that interesting. Um, and of course, you know, really the, the zombicide enemies aren't very interesting. They're just zombies. But, um... But these enemies have it slightly worse. There is no targeting priority. So when you shoot into a zone, 
you can target any enemy you wish with your hits. Um, if you have enough hits to kill it, you kill it. You can go shoot at another enemy if you wish. Um, there's, there's just no targeting priority. Um, which makes the enemies really have no personality. The most deadly ones, the ones that are the strongest, well, you can just go for them. Uh, and it's not like a big deal. Now I will say that the Kickstarter enemies are actually probably the most interesting enemies in the game. One enemy uh, wielding a chainsaw will run around and if it gets into your zone it'll do, I believe it's one damage to every single person in that zone. Which means grouping up is really not very beneficial. That is way more interesting than any of the enemies that are in the core box. Uh, the other enemy who's sort of interesting but also sort of kind of dumb is that they're sort of a suicide bomber so they go into your zone and then basically blow up um the thing is if you fire at them and you roll a six they blow up and then they blow up any others and they do damage to everybody in their zone so again if you shoot into the zone and there's a bunch of those chainsaw ones, well, and you do a six and you hit that enemy because again, no target priority. So you can just say, oh, I'm going for that one. And then they all blow up, so they all die. Um, your whole, you know, the whole tile of enemies is just, they're gone because they didn't even get to do anything. Um, those are definitely the most most interesting enemies. The, uh, the core box enemies don't really They don't do much. Um, one of them hits for a little bit more. Uh, one of them moves pretty fast, way fast. Um, and I think there's one that's sort of a mind control thing. And if you manage to kill the group around, it'll go walk into another group instead of attacking you. It's that's semi interesting, but the chances of that one spawning are pretty low in general um the most interesting enemies really in this game are the bosses um i like that there's a big boss um i do like that there's this kind of big fight but unfortunately with it the same problems kind of occur um with the big the regular enemies um they don't If you're in a big group, you can just kind of keep swatting at their health, and like you know, in a round or two, they're they're dead. <laughs> uh, they might get in a couple of good hits, which is kind of interesting, but they don't really do much. Um, their attacks can be deadly. There are a lot of attacks that they do that just wipe out your resolve or um, wipe out some health. They do like you know, two, three damage or they have like six die and they hit on a two plus it's it's pretty they're pretty deadly um and that's definitely the most interesting aspect of this game is the boss monsters and i wish zombicide had something that was kind of equivalent but if zombicide did it it would need to be just slightly better this is kind of a good system but it's not perfect it's they're not the most epic in the world they go down maybe just a little bit too easy especially you know uh, the missions don't really force you to be divided up and then sort of in a position where you're facing a boss alone um or you really have to stay, change strategies on the fly um it just it just kind of was what it was the other thing and this is semi nitpicky and semi sort of game related. It's there's a lot of die in this game. You're gonna be rolling resolve checks almost all the time. That's two die. Every time an enemy spawns, at least from the core set, that's another two die to see if another enemy spawns. Um, you've got the wound die. If you actually manage to get hit, that you gotta roll that die. Um, there's the movement die to see randomly which direction enemies move. And you're pretty much moving that one every single round. Um, there's just a lot of dice rolling. I think 
a little too much. Um, I don't mind dice rolling. I actually typically like them. Um, it adds a little bit of extra stress and tension sometimes. Um, but in this one, it just got kind of annoying. There's just a little bit too much dice rolling. Um, dice rolling for the enemy sometimes. Dice rolling for you know yourself. Dice rolling for an event maybe. Dice rolling for the wound. They just you know seven different six different dice rolls sometimes in a round and it's not just you know i did one attack he did another attack anything like that it's for completely separate things even the enemies sometimes roll die it's just a little too much so last thing and then i'll say a couple things that i actually really kind of like about the game um they've already added sort of an faq errata and added a couple of rules. Um, the figure limit that's in the game, they added something uh, where I believe if the room is considered full by the normal rules, if they uh, if an enemy tries to move in and they can't, then every survivor in that room will lose one health, I think, and one resolve, or you get to choose. Um, I forgot the exact rule, but... Um, and I believe even on the forums right now, they're still debating and adding rules which makes me feel that the game was not maybe play tested as much as it should have been or you know something um it it's i'm not generally a person who likes patches for board games um i feel like a board game should be pretty much settled when it comes out um i can see um you know something like Imperial Assault or Star Wars X-Wing or something like that, which has a competitive nature and then maybe someone figures out some sort of exploit for a card that uh, the developers really hadn't thought of. And so they kind of fix it. Uh, I believe Fantasy Flight, which those two games that I mentioned are from, generally tries to avoid that as much as possible, but occasionally they still, they still do it. Um... And that's okay. That's got a competitive nature. This is completely cooperative. Um, there's no competition whatsoever. Uh, so I don't really feel like there should be a patch or we're adding rules now. Um, if it was sort of like a setup rule change, if that patch maybe for a cooperative game was just like a small setup change or just some like quick sort of like, oh, you can make the game easier or harder by doing this, that's generally okay and i guess the the figure move, moving into is kind of a you can make the game higher harder by doing that but it's generally not something i like to see it makes me feel like somehow the game wasn't tw tested quite right or they just didn't put as much thought or time into it as they should have um so really that that that's it. In general, um, I unfortunately did not enjoy this game as much as I felt I should have. Um, like I said, Zombicide is one of my favorite games, so a game that's basically Zombicide in space, uh, I feel like I should have loved. Um, or at least really enjoyed. Um, but I, mostly I did not. There are a few things I did like. I, I do like the aspects of the enemies. You don't know what amount is out there. Um, but the unfortunate part about that was, of course, the setup, and you know roughly what numbers are out there of enemies. What may have been better if they took that idea and then sort of like multiplied it. Uh, maybe there's a max of like, I don't know, 20 radar tokens that can just go out off the board at one time. But instead, when you flip the... Um, or when you basically have to flip the radar token, maybe instead of it being a number and a picture on it, you actually have to draw a card, and then it tells you, oh, it's so many enemies spawn, or whatnot. Um, so that might have been a cool idea. Um, with the radar tokens, kind of another nitpicky thing I forgot was um, when you flip it over, it's just a picture and then a number. Um, somewhat hard to know you know right away like which enemy refers to what picture um in the back of the rule book there there are pictures of the enemies and their names 
uh, which allows you to kind of go, oh, okay, and you can figure it out based on that. But again, that's another thing that, you know, I kind of wish it was on the board or um, on a card or just some way instead of having to reference the rule book all the time for, for little things like that. Um, I did like the idea of the boss battles, like I said. Um, again, I would just kind of flesh it out, make it a little bit more. Uh, I liked the wacky sort of enemies. I liked the, the suicide bomber. Uh, I like the one that hit every single person in the zone for at least one damage. Uh, things, wacky enemies like that, um, I think would have been really cool. And they should have probably done quite a few more than just the um, just the one set. Um, otherwise, the enemies aren't quite as wacky. But uh, if they did more wacky things, I think that would be, that would have been pretty pretty lot. In closing, I'll kind of just say this. Um, I do believe there is a game in here. Um, it works. It plays. Um, it's not like completely broken or anything. Uh, I don't think it's downright horrible. I personally didn't enjoy it as much as I hoped I would have, but that doesn't mean that someone else out there won't. Um, or, and of course, if you enjoy sort of, um, the art style, which I think is actually really fantastic. Um, the tiles look great. The artwork on in the rule book look great. The artwork on the tiles look great. It's just they did a good job there, presentation wise, pretty much spot on. So I think there are people out there who could enjoy this, um, especially if you like sort of altering rule sets and modifying things around. If you're totally into that, um, it's it's not too bad. I mean, you've got at least a, a start here. Um, otherwise, I, I, I don't think I can really recommend this game. It's just, uh, it's missing something. Um, generally, I feel like it's missing kind of a lot of tension and sort of excitement. It just kind of seemed like, um, yeah, there's these sort of big enemies, but they're pretty easy to take out for the most part. Um, and they don't really, they don't swarm, they don't sort of like overtake you, they just kind of come and then die. <laughs> so the the tension I felt was mostly missing. That's probably kind of the big thing for me um, that's missing from this game. I do feel it is slightly, maybe just slightly unfair to compare them to a bigger company like Cool Me or Not, which has you know, many years experience at this point. They've got the factory relationships. They've got the, you know, some of the biggest talent in the board game industry at the moment. And, you know, they can just kind of dominate that area. Um, so for another company to kind of take their system and say, you know what, we don't want to do exactly what they do, but put it in space. And they tried something a little different. Sure, it didn't work, but... Um, you know, this is this is their first game. Um, I've seen. I know that they have a second game coming out that uh, I didn't back, but at least it looked it looks interesting. Um, we'll have to see how it all pans out for that one. Um, but you know, Grimlord Games. I hope they do well. Uh, I hope they actually make some some really good games soon. I hope Village Attacks, which is their second game coming soon. I'm not exactly sure when. Um, Turns out fantastic. Um, that would be great. And I hope that their factory relationships improve and they can make even better miniatures um, and sort of they learn kind of like some, you know, from their mistakes. Um, I think, you know, most companies have kind of stumbling blocks, but uh, I give these guys credit where credit is due. They, uh, they made it, they put out a Kickstarter. They fulfilled it pretty much on time. Uh, I feel like they were slightly late, but, um, only by a couple of months, um, I, I want to say two or three. Uh, I wasn't exactly super paying attention, but it's not was not drastic. It's about in the norm, I'd say, of you know back in a Kickstarter, um, and everything's in there. There, you know, the the rule book looks good. It's not like there's missing pages. Um, I didn't see any sort of big typos or anything like that, so. Quality control seemed to be pretty good. The, I mean, the worst part was obviously some bent miniatures, but um, you know, at least for a first game, for a first Kickstarter, 
Uh, I feel like they did a pretty good job on that front. Um, and so I hope in the future they do even better. Um, so that's all I really have to say on Endure the Stars. Uh, any further questions or anything, just ask them in the comments below. And I will try to answer them in person as quickly as possible. Um, that's it for now. Bye.